Hey, what's up YouTube? Do you wanna become an idea generating machine? Basically a factory just turning out idea after idea. They're just popping up, popping up all over the place. Well, here's the thing. If you're like most people, me included, when do your best ideas typically come to you? Unfortunately, that really inconvenient time when you're about to put your head down to sleep. Or when you're taking a shower. Hey, how about some privacy in here? And typically what happens after you wake up in the morning or you're done taking that shower. Poof, those ideas are gone forever, never to be seen from or heard again, unfortunately. Well, here's the thing with ideas. Ideas are a numbers game. The more ideas you generate and create for yourself or your business, the more likelihood you have of coming up with a good one. Because unfortunately, Fortunately, not all ideas that we come up with are the greatest ones, right? We've all ran those ideas past our friends and family and they're just like, oh my God, that's the worst idea. Or they're just really nice to you and they won't tell you that it's a very bad idea. Well, there's a saying that it takes money to make money. And while I agree with that statement a tiny little bit, I mean a tiny, tiny little bit, the reality is that it takes ideas to make money. It takes ideas to make anything really. Think about any great accomplishment or achievement in this world today. It all started with a idea, right? The most valuable real estate in the world, the six inches between your ears, that's where ideas start and ideas are absolutely free to generate. You do not need money to make ideas. So that is a total myth that it takes money to make money. I mean, again, I agree with that statement a little bit, but I don't want to waste any more of your valuable time. Let's get to what you came here for, which is the content. Let's go. Okay, first things first. Now, to become an idea generation machine, we first have to understand what tools and equipment we're working with. And in this case, our most powerful and important tool for generating ideas is our brain. The most valuable real estate in the world is the six inches between our ears. So disclaimer time, okay? I am not a neurologist, I am not a neuroscientist, I am not a brain surgeon, I'm not a doctor, heck, I'm not even a medical professional whatsoever. I'm just a guy who has studied this topic quite a bit and self-learned some things about how our brains work, which is something everybody should do right away. These things that we were equipped with at birth are magnificent, marvelous machines, and a lot of us don't even really understand how they work. So here's how fundamentally a, our brains work, is we are, constantly scanning the environment to keep us alive. That's the brain's number one function is to keep us alive. So we're scanning our environment, scanning our surroundings and looking for threats to us basically. The other thing with our brains is fundamentally it is a problem solving machine. Our brains are constantly bringing in data and then computing and interpreting that data. So. Something you have to be familiar with is a term called cognitive load. Basically, it's a fancy term for how much data and how much our brains are working for us. So here's why things like going to bed at night and showering and stuff like that, that's general, this is why generally the best ideas come to you at those times because at that time, your brain is under very minimal cognitive load because of a thing that we call Habits, right? Habits are just that. There's something that we have repeated over and over again, hundreds if not thousands of times. So things like going to bed, hopefully showering is something you've done more than once, but because you've done it so many times, when you're carrying out that task, your brain is basically, it's not shut off because your you know, things are still running, you're still breathing, blood's still circling, all that kind of stuff, but your brain is basically under zero cognitive load at these times because you've done these tasks so many times your brain has stored that data to make it easier to do it in the future that's essentially what a habit is it's a shortcut for your brain to reduce the stress or cognitive load on your brain so when you're going to bed or you're taking a shower you've done it so many times your creativity opens wide open because your brain is not working that hard you're not focused on your surroundings or your tasks at hand or anything you're not you're not focused at all really you're just doing something you've done many Many, many times before. So here's the secret. If you want to create ideas on demand and just be that factory, just, just turn and turn and turn and turn out ideas over and over again, that's how you biohack it, is you have to put yourself in a situation or an environment where your brain is under very minimal cognitive load. So I'm gonna share with you what I do personally that works really well. I'm not saying this is what you have to do. This is just what I do and I'm gonna share it with you to give you some ideas. So let's go check it out. 
Uh, no, seriously, let's go. Let's go check it out. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Really, Mike? Really? Driving? That's how you generate ideas? That's how you come up with ideas? That's how you lessen that cognitive load that you were talking about earlier? So I get it, I know what you're thinking. But here's the thing, driving, unless it's in the city, so again, disclaimer time, I am not at all advocating distracted driving or anything like that. You should absolutely focus on the road and focus at what you're doing. But here's the thing, if you've been driving, especially for a long time, it requires a lot less brain power than you think. It's kind of not totally on autopilot, but it kind of is, right? And especially what I'm, where I'm driving, out here in the country where there's just, just nature and these back roads, there's nobody for miles. I'm just more or less driving on auto autopilot. And here's another thing, especially when it comes to the brain, right? There's another theory, there's another concept, and it's called pattern association. It's loosely related to cognitive load. But what pattern association is, is it's your brain scanning, doing that, you know, doing that scanning the environment, scanning the surrounding thing again. But what it's doing is it's scanning and it's looking for patterns because, you know, our brains, it's not that they're lazy, but if they were to take in every single sensory load, that was placed on them, they would probably blow up. <laughs> I don't know if they actually would, but we would be completely overwhelmed with information. So our brains, again, it's not that they're lazy, but our brains are designed to shelter us and protect us from being overwhelmed. So pattern association is one of those things. We look around and we're looking for patterns, things that are familiar. So you see something, it goes into your short-term memory initially, and then it's trying to match any files and cataloging with our long-term memory and basically saying, hey guys, like, hey, long-term memory, do you recognize this is this familiar and if it is it's basically just it's basically disregarded right it's not it's not something that the brain has to compute or process because it's already familiar with it so that's why I do this this drive out here in the country and nature I mean for one listen listen to the birds it's beautiful out here right for one I just like being out in the country and it just clears my mind and it really allows me to think uh, you know think clearly and come up with ideas but the other thing is that I've done this drive so many times that pattern association and cognitive load are all very minimal. So again, that's why I say that I'm kind of driving on autopilot a bit. One, I've been driving for a really long time, but two, I've made this drive, this loop, this circuit that I go on out in the country and within nature, I've done it so many times that it's very, very familiar to me. So I'm not, you know, I'm not, my brain isn't learning. And that's again, essentially what cognitive load is, right? Is your brain is learning and it's you know, taking things in and it's trying to decide you know, how to compare it to everything else that it knows. So doing this drive so many times, there's not a lot of new learning. There's really, there's a lot of pattern association because everything is a pattern to my brain and to me because I'm so familiar with the drive. So another thing you might be saying, well, Mike, you know, what about meditation? Like, why not meditate to come up with ideas? And I'm really glad you say that. So I wanna to go to one more place and show you something else and we're gonna talk about meditation with ideas. And by the way, guys, let me know in the comments below, just type makes sense if all of this brain stuff is making sense, because hopefully, hopefully I'm not overcomplicating it for you. So I'm glad that you bring up meditation because it's a very valid thing to bring up when it comes to reducing cognitive load, pattern association, all those types of things, and, and really getting in that kind of zen mode where you can just think clear and generate ideas. Now, it absolutely might work for you. I'm, I'm not saying that it can't, and I'm not saying that what, what I'm doing here is what you need to be doing. This is just what I do to reduce cognitive load and pattern association, all that kind of stuff, to help me think clearly to generate ideas. You do what works for you, but for me, meditation, I tried it, I gave it an honest effort for generating you know, ideas, and it just, didn't really work for me. Um, partly because I like to keep business and personal separate. And for me, meditation is more of a personal thing. I like to, you know, relax, use meditation to relax, focus on my breathing, and that's it. I don't want to think about anything but my breathing and really nothing, right? For me, that's the point of meditation is to think of nothing. Just focus on your breathing and relax. So 
I don't like to use it for that purpose because it's kind of a business thing. I like to keep business and personal separate. Now, on those kind of lines of meditation, on the drive that I do, I end up, I end up at a spot like this. So I don't know what it is, it's the water, the sand, beach, all that kind of thing. I'm just really drawn to it. So it's kind of a form of meditation, I guess. It's just not meditation in the classical sense. Now, meditation might absolutely work for you. Just, again, for me, it's not that what I do is right or wrong. It's not that this drive and everything I'm doing is right or wrong. Um, whatever works for you is what's gonna work for you. The key is you just gotta get into that place where your brain isn't lighting up like a Christmas tree, right? Now, it's really also important that we touch on this. I mean, it's super, super, super important. Every idea you come up, come up with, good or bad, you're gonna wanna record it, whether that's with good old fashioned notebook and a pen or an app on your phone. You absolutely want to record these ideas because guess what happens if you don't you're probably going to forget them they'll just poof, go away never to be seen or heard from again and that would be an absolute tragedy um, especially if it's a really good idea so record those things so you don't forget them and that doesn't happen to you because it certainly happened to me and it sucks when you just can't remember that really great idea you had Okay, just to conclude this thing guys, the key takeaway is you want to get yourself in a space. If you want to generate ideas on demand, whenever you want, at will, you want to get yourself into a space where you're not learning a whole bunch of new things and loading up your brain, that cognitive load stuff. And you also want to be in a space where pattern association is not going to work against you, meaning that you are familiar with the surroundings, your brain isn't scanning and trying to learn a whole bunch of new things. But the biggest thing that I want to leave you with, and this is probably the most important thing ideas are completely worthless that's right they are worthless they're not worth anything unless they are put into action and implemented so take action on your ideas guys and I guess another thing too is to remember to write them down so that you don't forget them so that you can take action on them now that's all I got guys I hope you found this video valuable if you did please give it a like it has nothing to do with my ego or vanity or anything like that it's just simply to tell me that you guys found this video valuable and I can create more content like this if you didn't like it that's perfectly okay too I always try my best and that's perfectly okay. Now, if you wanna see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification button so that you're notified when a new video is released. My name is Mike Banks, thank you for watching. I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful water. Boom! Mm -hmm.